Hi, welcome to episode 6 of Hound TV, the world's first video podcast for dogs and their owners. I'm your host, Stephen Fleabag Pam. Today on the show, we'll find out how to become a veterinary behaviourist and meet our Hounds of the Week, Delta and Beethan. Check it out. Hound TV. Because every dog has its day. Oh. Our Hounds of the Week are Beethan and Delta. And their humans are Tracy and Luke. G'day, guys. G'day. Um, Tracy, this might be a silly question. What kind of dog is Beethan? Beethan is a golden retriever. Really? Yes, he is a golden retriever. You see them everywhere these days. They're really, really popular. Um, really easy to train. Great, friendly, loving, sensitive, great dogs. And how old is Beethan? He's 10 months. He, um, he looks like a fully grown dog, but he's a big baby mm -hmm. at the moment. So... He pushes his luck all the time, but okay. no, he's adorable. And uh, what kind of dog is Delta? A golden retriever. <laughs> <laughs> and how old is Delta? Uh, she's four years old now, so mm -hmm. she's been doing, um, been in training for four, four years, three years, pretty much. So yeah. And, uh, tell us about what Delta does. Uh, she does a, some special things, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, uh, she's an urban search and rescue dog. So uh, she looks for people in collapsed buildings and. Um, once she finds them, yeah, we get in the fire brigade in and they rescue them, so... Fantastic. And she does a bit of agility too? Yeah, that's all part of the training. The um, agility is where um, gets their groundwork for working on, on unstable ground, like um, collapsed buildings and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's just part of it. It's all seesaws, ladders and drums and... Do you enter in um, competitions for agility or it's just part of the search and rescue? No, it's just, that's just part of the search and rescue training, so yeah. It's... Um, a bit, bit extra fun for the dogs. Great. And Tracy is um, Beethan on the track to, to doing this stuff as well? Yes. Um, he's been training since November when he was just eight weeks. He Before he was 16 weeks old, he'd been over two separate rubble piles. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're very, very lucky. We do have access to government rubble piles, which is awesome. So, no, he's he's well on the way and he's a bit of a natural. So he'll be he'll be right. Give him a couple more years, a couple more footy seasons. Great. <laughs> Normally I ask what the dogs like to do for fun, but I take it that's what they like to do for fun. Oh no, they they also they go for walks every morning and every night, and um, they love the beach and love everything. Yeah, we we get out with them. We don't have kids. This is our fur family. That's your so family, right? yeah, this is it. This Wonderful. keeps us happy. All right. Uh, well, we'll um, do a story on the search and rescue stuff in future. We'll come and see you guys. Would that be okay? Yeah, it'd be great. Uh, so, what does Delta like to do for fun? Um, pretty much the search and rescue work. She, well, she still does all the same things as a family pet, but yeah, the search and rescue is her favourite thing of all. It's just tug of war and playing and finding people. That's pretty much it. So, is that something you need to do every weekend? Or um, yeah, we do training every weekend. Um, we spend probably half a day weekend training but the training also comes in it's every single day of the week that we do training so it's when we go out for a walk we find things to do with them. part of it yeah so would it be fair to say you're dog people <laughs> <laughs> well if they're it dog funny. people no well we're, we're yeah we are dog people it we we started washing dogs up in queensland out of the back of a trailer and um we tried like washed so many different dogs and and we liked the goldens because they were cute from puppies but then when they became old dogs because i mean a dog's for life and um, and really like not them just as for Christmas. No, yeah, no, no, no. They're for life. That's it. Um, they don't know how to deal with it. You know, being just for Christmas. Yeah. Um, sorry, he's gone. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Um, but yeah, just like the breed through all their ages, and they're also really easy to train. So if you're a first dog owner, they're off, often a brilliant breed to go for. Not too dominant, so very that's, pleasing. That's a unique um, perspective to come from, having washed dogs, so you, you really got to know your breeds. Yeah, we, they're very similar. I mean, all dogs are different, but um, they're very similar you know, traits, I guess. Mm -hmm. Did you get both of these dogs from the same breeder or same family? Um, no, no, different breeders. Uh, Delta's breeder was up in Queensland. Um, we got her and we were actually washing dogs. So, okay. um, Bethan's breeder is down in Melbourne and he was specifically chosen for the search and rescue work. So, Delta was just naturally good at it, so we were lucky. But yeah, Bethan, he was specifically chosen. He went through all the testing that um, the guide dogs go through. So, we got to see what he was like um, before. Yeah, um, yeah. just got to see what sort of traits he had before he sort of started growing up. So was he with a, a host family before he was with you guys, like with the guide dogs, or you had him from a, from the um, younger stage? Yeah, we had him from eight weeks old, so um, we got to see him when he was three weeks old and saw him grow up as a puppy and stuff like that, so we've had been in his life all of his, 
all of his life, so yeah, he's a great dog. <laughs> and if you want to know more about Golden Retrievers, don't forget to drop by houndtv.com. In dog related news since the last episode, we came across a terrible story from China where in the Yunnan province and I think possibly in a few other places as well in an effort to curb a rabies problem over there, they're sort of having a mass uh, slaughter of dogs. Uh, they've slaughtered 50,000 dogs in this uh, in the Yunnan province where they're paying owners the equivalent of 62 US cents to kill their own dog and uh, there's talk of, it's like something out of a B-grade horror movie they've got death squads going around clubbing dogs and it's too horrific to think about but um, what can we do about it? Uh, Gary wrote in and left a comment on the website so maybe write to your Chinese uh, ambassador in your country or um, talk to your animal welfare, local animal welfare organisation, make sure they're onto it. Uh, Talkback Radio, really uh, letters to the editor. Uh, anything that you can do to get campaigns going in your area may not help, but um, it's certainly worth a try because um, it's pretty tragic what's going on over there. In more bizarre news, um, I read the, this is from United Press International, a woman in Florida. Uh, her dogs were uh, being dragged into a canal by an otter, her Labrador and her Fox Terrier, and she uh, needed to punch the otter repeatedly until her dogs were released. So uh, the dogs received treatment for their wounds and did not require stitches, apparently. And the uh, director of the local wildlife sanctuary indicated this may, may have been a territorial attack because otters are not normally aggressive, just curious. So there you go, watch out for those otters. On a lighter note, um, we found out about the Baolingual Dog Translator, which is a gadget that uh, your dog wears on their collar. It's got a little transmitter, and uh, when your dog barks, you have a receiver which looks a bit like a Tamagotchi, possibly because it is a Tamagotchi, and it's got a little LCD display, and um, it's got a little... It indicates with a facial expression what your dog is feeling, apparently. So uh, we saw those on eBay for about a hundred bucks. Uh, so more details, check out the Hound TV website. In related news, uh, also there's a project at Marquette University, I think that's how you say it, in Wisconsin in the USA, uh, called the Dr. Doolittle Project, where they're um, applying uh, voice pattern analysis to animal noises, including dogs. And uh, this is potentially, uh, apart from you know being able to work for future more advanced dog translators uh, potentially has um, animal welfare applications so they could use it say um, in a zoo to be able to remotely monitor animals and um, it would be able to tell them if the elephants were feeling distressed or whatever so there anyway there's always lots of news on the Hound TV website well not lots but a bit so do drop by also on the website we've got a growing selection of individual dog breed pages so um, if your breed isn't there or if you're an expert on a particular breed um, why not drop us a line at the usual address wolf at houndtv.com we always welcome your contributions and we need more content on there so um, we'd love it if you'd write into us Hound TV. I'm with veterinary behaviourist Dr Jackie Lee and Cricket Jackie, lots of people want to become vets kids want to become vets. How, how and why does someone become a veterinary behaviourist? Well for me it was a combining of my interest in veterinary medicine with um, my interest in uh, training dogs uh, and also animal behaviour. Um, when I was in general practice I found that there's an awful lot of people trying to deal with problem behaviour uh, and for some of these behaviour problems it's not just training problems, it's not just that the dog hasn't learnt what's appropriate uh, or the cat hasn't learnt what's appropriate, um, it really is that the animal is having an emotional problem coping with the real world. So um, I found out that I really didn't have the skills to deal with that so I started looking around for further training in, in veterinary medicine um, in veterinary behavior basically. Okay. So what is the um, study path to get into into veterinary behavior? Well first of all there's the um, veterinary undergraduate degree so you become a veterinarian then there's a, a college that's called the Australian College of Veterinary Scientists which is based out of Queensland uh, and is a national college and you gain entry to that through passing exams and there is a section of that called the veterinary behaviour chapter. Um, so uh, about 
six or seven years ago I set my exams in that and uh, passed which meant that I am now a veterinarian with a special interest in veterinary behaviour um, and I chose to start to see behaviour cases um, on a part-time basis um, and I'm combining that with sort of further study um, in the field of psychology uh, and animal behaviour. Okay. So. What, are the, uh, what are some of the highlights or lowlights of your, because you have a practice as well, right? So what, yeah. what, what are some of the weird and wacky things you've seen? Well, most of the dogs that I see, I see for anxiety. So they're really just having trouble coping um, with their owners being away or with thunderstorms, that sort of thing. Um, some of the coping strategies are quite interesting. Um, I've had one little of dog. Of the owners or the dogs? No, of, the, of the dogs. <laughs> I had one little dog that used to like to um, mount a, a cushion mm -hmm. whenever he got distressed. Mm -hmm. uh, that was quite interesting. <laughs> A lot of the things that I see is really um, the dogs are crying, um, they may be digging to get out, um, had one whippet that you know would take off uh, from his owner's house and go to her mother-in-law's house, um, which I thought was, was quite interesting. Um, I do see the odd aggression case, which um, can be... Um, can be quite interesting, you know, it can be a bit dangerous for everybody um, and certainly I think people underestimate um, how dangerous an aggressive dog can be. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, I mean, a lot of the time it's it's just the animal's not coping and it's it's nice to be able to get in there and, and explain that to the owner. So it's not that the dog is a naughty or a bad dog or it's doing it because it's jealous or whatever, it's doing it because it simply can't cope. Well, thanks for talking to us today. That's right. Um, we might get you back um, another time and talk about um, some of the some of those concerns and how people might be able to deal with them as yeah. well. That'd be I'd love to do that. Great. Yeah. Well, that wraps up episode six. Whatever you do, don't miss the next episode. It is going to be a corker. We're going to go back and see Delta in action at the Swiss Search Dog Association, and Jackie's going to tell us about her dog personality study. True story. See you then.